a coven scattered across space and time, hunted by an ancient demon, protected by one woman, a woman whose exploits are the stuff of legend. Join me on the distant planet of Grand Dam, where I have been granted an audience with the demigoddess Alexandra inside the sacred walls of the Temple of Evermore, one-on-one -on -one with this very dynamic history maker. I asked Alexandra if I could take a tour of the grounds, and she was delighted to show me around because, as she explained, it was also a chance for her to catch up on all the changes that had happened since she'd been away. It was while looking down into the beautiful Valley of Avalon to the celebrated Orchard of Evermore that we stopped to talk a little about those famous apples and their significance to the coven. Apples are a big thing at Evermore. There's an apple something at every meal here. If you can shoehorn an apple into a recipe, they've done it. The size of the orchard is renowned, but the photographs in here say really don't do it justice. Well, as part of the ordination ceremony, they plant an apple tree. Why apple trees? Well, planting some kind of tree was originally the oracle's idea. Being the first, she was kind of winging it on ceremonies. I suggested apple trees in remembrance of a friend of mine who lived a few centuries ago. They were special to her, and she was special to me. That seems very spiritual. And don't go there. Sorry, is the topic emotionally charged for you? Uh, yeah, but not in the way you think. Lately, I've been really reconsidering whether planting trees was the way to go. Now we've got like a bajillion of them. For the most part of the 21st century... I wouldn't say a bajillion. Uh, my Several hundred, maybe, but... Planet, uh, my math, that's a bajillion. As I was saying, for the most part of the 21st century, I hated tomatoes. But now, it's apples. Tomatoes because? A similar situation, much smaller scale. You really do have a tendency to wander off the page a lot, eh? You mentioned the ceremony. What's involved? Well, they all don their fair trade, unbleached, cotton unity robes and hemp lace sustainable garden clogs and meet in the orchard when the bell rings. The monument's bell? Uh, yeah. To the sisters, it's consecrated. In the orchard, they form a harmony circle. In Kent, plant a tree and Bob's your uncle, a new priestess is brought into the fold. Then they get tipsy on organic hard cider. Are you pulling my chain again? No. Uh, like I said, an ordination is happening today. You're welcome to attend and see for yourself. I'd be honored. Inclusiveness is a motto here. <laughs> well, a motto. The sisters have tons of mottos. I think it's our second biggest export, right before affirmations and right after friggin' apples. I take it that's the bell summoning the sisters to the orchard? After the ordination, it was time for me to take my leave. It is tradition at the Temple of Evermore for the hostess to bestow upon her guests a personalized affirmation, a motto to live by, and a large jug of hard cider. I and my small crew were no exception. My affirmation from the demigoddess Alexandra is that I will wander off the page a little less with every interview I do, and my motto is, never laugh at a bird which could poop on you later. Though departing with newfound insight, wisdom, and surprisingly high proof liquor, no gifts from this experience are as cherished as the audience I was granted and the time that I got to spend with this most unforgettable history maker. Perhaps you could walk us through a recent example. I arrived at a little planet called Nimbus. I went down to the surface, met some of the locals. Tara and I found the gal in question, and not at all how I imagined it when you said extraction. Uh, how did you imagine it? Something heart pounding. I guess for some it might be. Really, it's just about having people skills and being a good ambassador. 